Hello and welcome to this SRC Learning Essentials series video about internet access using route leaking between VRF and GRT. If you are not familiar with the Service Routing Certification Program, you can learn more by visiting our website at www.networks.nokia.com src. In this video, we will first list the various solutions available to provide VPRN-based internet access. Next, we will discuss internet access using route leaking between the virtual route forwarding or VRF table and global route table or GRT. And finally, we will move to our lab to configure and verify this solution on Nokia 7750 service routers. Many VPN sites need to access the public internet in addition to accessing other VPN sites. There are various possible solutions available to accomplish this. The first option is valid when the internet routes reside in the base route table or GRT of the local PE. In this case, the CE uses a separate interface that terminates on the GRT of the PE. The second option is valid when the internet routes reside in the GRT of a remote PE. In this case, the CE uses its existing VRF interface to the PE and routes are leaked between the VRF and the GRT on the remote PE. The third option is valid when internet routes reside in their own VRF. In this case, internet access is provided to the CE via its VRF interface by importing the internet routes into the VRF. Note that the proper solution is selected based on network topology and available resources. The remainder of this presentation will focus on internet access using route leaking between VRF and GRT. Certain networks require the use of a single VPRM to provide internet access as well as to maintain VPN connectivity between different customer sites. This is achieved by route leaking between the VRF and GRT. In this example, PE3 is the internet gateway router that provides internet connectivity via its base routing table. The VRFs on PE1 and PE2 need to provide internet access to CE1 and CE2 in addition to providing VPN connectivity. There is no requirement for the VRFs to contain the full internet route table. So a default route to the internet gateway router, PE3 in this case, is sufficient. Then, routes are leaked between the VRF and GRT to enable internet access. To support data forwarding from CEs 1 and 2 toward the internet, PE3 first advertises a default route in its VPRN. PE1 and PE2 receive this default route via MPBGP, install it in their corresponding VRFs, and advertise it to their attached CEs. This ensures that on PE1 and PE2, an incoming packet that is destined to the internet is forwarded to PE3. So in this example, when CE1 sends a packet to IP address 192.51.100.1, it first forwards the packet to PE1. PE1 then looks in its VRF route table. The incoming packet matches the default route in PE1's VRF and is forwarded to PE3. When PE3 receives packets destined for its VRF, it first looks up the next hop address in the VRF. If there is a match, the packet is forwarded based on the defined interface. If, as in this case, the match is of type GRT, or if there is no match, PE3 performs a second lookup, this time in the GRT, and forwards the packet based on the base routing information. So, continuing with our example, when PE3 receives the packet destined for 192.51.100.1, it performs a lookup in its VRF. The packet matches the VRF default route that points to the GRT. Therefore, PE3 performs a second lookup in the GRT and forwards the packet to its destination via the appropriate GRT interface. Finally, to support data forwarding from the internet back toward the CE, the CE routes must be advertised to the internet. 
To meet this requirement, the CE routes are first exported from the VRF to the GRT on PE3. These routes are then advertised from the GRT to the internet via the routing protocol running over the PE to internet interface. Next, we will move to our lab environment to complete this case study. VPRN ID 1 is configured on PEs 1, 2, and 3. We will configure route leaking between the VRF and GRT on the gateway router PE3 to provide internet access to CEs 1 and 2. All right, let's start by testing internet connectivity from the blue VRF on PE1. Ping router 1, which is the blue VPRN service ID 192.51.100.1.1. And as expected, the ping fails because we have not yet configured a VPRN-based internet access. So let's configure internet access using route leaking between VRF and GRT. Heading over to PE3, we can begin by configuring the double lookup functionality under the VPRN context. Configure service VPRN1 GRT lookup Enable GRT. Now, the base routing table will be used to forward a packet in two scenarios. One, if there is no match in the VRF, and two, the match in the VRF has the GRT keyword. To enable the second scenario, P3 must advertise a default route in its VPRN. Static route 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, .0, 0 and we add the GRT keyword. The static route is now advertised the PEs 1 and 2 and published as a black hole in PE3's VRF. Show router 1 route table to view the VRF shows the static black hole route. Back over to PE1 show router 1 Route table verifies that the static route has been successfully installed in the blue VRF. This ensures that on PE1 and PE2, an incoming packet that is destined to the internet is forwarded to the next hop 10.10.10.3, which is PE3. Next, we must create and export a routing policy on PE3 to allow leaking of specific VPRN routes to the GRT. Configure router policy options, begin. Prefix list, we'll call this VPRN one public. And now add the two subnets from CEs 1 and 2. Here we will use the keyword longer to indicate that the prefix matches any route having the specified prefix and a prefix length equal to or longer than the specified length. Prefix 198.10.10.0 slash 24 longer and prefix 198.20.20 0 slash 24 longer. And create the policy. Policy statement, and we'll call this VPRN 1 to GRT. Entry 10 from prefix list VPRN 1 public, action accept, and commit. And export this policy under the VPRN context. Configure service VPRN 1, GRT lookup, and export GRT 
VPRN1 to GRT. All right, so the CE route should now be installed in the GRT. And we can verify this by viewing the GRT with show router route table. Notice the two CE prefixes are now in the GRT and recognized as being leaked from the VPRN by having a protocol type of VPN leak. Also notice the default preference for the protocol VPN leak is 180, which is higher than any normal GRT protocol. This ensures that the VPN routes are less preferred by the GRT if the same prefixes are learned from another protocol. Next, we must create another policy to allow the VPN routes to be advertised from the GRT to the internet. Configure router policy options. Begin. Policy statement, we'll call this export VPN. Entry 10 from protocol. VPN leak. Action accept. And then commit. And now export the policy under the BGP group since the protocol running over the PE3 to internet link is eBGP. Configure router BGP group eBGP. Export. Export VPN. All right, let's verify the data path from the internet to one of the CEs. Show router fib1, 198.10.10.1 slash 32. So when the internet sends a packet to 198.10.10.1, it forwards the packet to PE3. PE3 consults its global routing table and based on the FIB table forwards the packet to PE1 via the VRF. PE1 of course then receives the packet and forwards it to CE1 based on its VRF. Finally let's run the same ping from the start of the lab to test internet connectivity again. Ping router 1 192.51.100.1 And this time, because of route leaking between the VRF and GRT on PE3, we get a successful response. And that does it for this video on internet access using route leaking between VRF and GRT. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Content for this video was adapted from the Nokia SRC Virtual Private Routed Networks course. You can access the complete course via any of the three learning formats shown in this page as well as get remote private access to a service router lab to complete the course lab exercises. If you are interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.